PDP Digital Media Team Studio. It is exactly 29 days to a dual state governorship election. Professor Abiodu Falodu is a renowned professor of medicinal and natural product chemistry in the Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, University of Benin, with over 21 years experience in research and teaching. He is one of the foremost experts in anti-cancer natural product drug, drug discovery with over 100 scientific papers published in peer-reviewed journals. He has successfully isolated anti-cancer molecules from medicinal plants. He is a recipient of the prestigious Fulbright Scholar Award in 2013 and Chinese Academy of Science Award in 2009. He isolated the first chemical principle from an indigenous medicinal plant used for the management of threatened abortion, which earned him the Mayor and Baker Professional Innovative Award in 2007, among other many awards. He is currently the rector at Dostate Polytechnic, Usain, where he has brilliantly executed the initiatives of His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Nogegase Obaseki, the governor of Edo State. And of course, he's still executing these initiatives. He is our guest today on our program. Professor Falodu, you are welcome. Good Thank morning. You. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you on this program. Thank you for having me. Now, in your own assessment, what would you say about the administration of the Godwin Obase, of, of the administration of uh, Mr. Godwin Obaseki in the last three years and eight months, knowing that you have been in Benin for a very long time? Yeah. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, assessment, the assessment of uh, His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. For the past three years and half, uh, I would say there are different. Uh, my assessment can be is based on uh, uh, different categories in the area of uh, uh, enhancing uh, the geographical landscape of a those state by that building infrastructure, uh, uh, supporting uh, some educational ecosystem, uh, ensuring that we have a relative peace in Edo State, and also uh, bringing his word of experience uh, as a technocrat in transforming and repositioning uh, the leadership style in governance. So uh, I can discuss these uh, different aspects. Uh, first, uh, I believe strongly that for ideas uh, to work properly, you must have people who have access to information. Mr. Godwin Obaseki, the governor of Edo State, is a man that we all know that he has is fully loaded with a lot of information on governance. So his leadership style is unique, it's excellent. Because when you look at the kind of reforms he's executing, he's carried out in a do state, you know that it takes a man of the governor to actually effect such changes that we are we are all experienced today. When you look at the transformative leadership quality of His Excellency, take for instance, for example, when you look at the, the state, you look at the way the, the, the governance structure, unlike what it used to be before, where we had issue of uh, people that are not well cultured. I mean, just coming to uh, government, and uh, taking decisions or executing projects without due process and due diligence. When you look at the institutional reforms, for example, it has carried out for the past three and a half years, you agree with me that 
His Excellency has done very well. First, let's look at the educational reform. Uh, it's a global phenomenon now that the Edu Best Initiative of uh, His Excellency uh, is winning a lot of awards and is attracting attention uh, from educationists, educational institutions, governments all over the world. Uh, and that is because he believes that for you to have men and women that can be placed in position of leadership, it has to start from the primary level. No. And, uh, yes. Yes. Now, if you are to rate the governor's educational programs from, yeah. from basic to tertiary, yeah. what would you say? Basic to tertiary, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, that is, you know, to, to build, he has done very well. That is, is, is established part. When you look at the institution, you know, he's building infrastructure at the basic level, at the primary level, by, you know, deploying facilities, deploying ICT initiative in enhancing, you know, the, 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 the teaching and learning. And you agree with me that the world we live today, for you to excel, Virtually everything that we do is ICT driven. Yeah. And so at the primary level, what he's doing is that he's building a solid foundation. We must get that right. Because the problem we have today in Nigeria is that we have people who are in position of leadership today or in different areas without, in fact, as a matter of fact, I can tell you this, ICT, there are no ICT proficients. And again, the education system, you know, is uh, the, 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 where they pass through or the education that they, they actually acquire is faulty. So at the primary level is building a very sound academic uh, infrastructure, architecture, which is very fundamental. And so when you go to schools today at the primary level, you discover that the students learn effectively with computer-aided facilities. And that is very, very important. And that's what happened all over the world. So that is, then when you go to the tertiary institution, just like you have, uh, yes, at the tertiary level, I'm the rector of Edo State Polytechnic. By the grace of God, I was, uh, he appointed me uh, in uh, 2018. And when I got to that school, there were a lot of issues. And one of them was that the infrastructure, the academic infrastructure, was nothing to write home about. Okay, now we yeah. want you to now give us um, an overview of um, the reforms and programs that have been implemented at USEN since you took over the institution. Uh, the reforms can be classified into three categories. Uh, first, the administrative aspect yeah. uh, category. When, when, when I was deployed to that school, yeah. we, the, the Excellency gave me a matching order that the school should be repositioned, restructured, to meet a standard, a standard polytechnic, a tertiary institution. Of course, you know, His Excellency is very passionate about vocational and technical education. Yeah. And so the first thing we had to do, for example, is to change the nomenclature, the institution was formerly known as Edo State Institute of Technology and Management. But in order to meet the global demands, it was changed to Edo State Polytechnic. Hussein. Yes, by His Excellency. He signed the B into law. And so today, that name, the name has been changed. And apart from that, it will also interest you to know, for the first time, since the school was established in 2002, there was no single convocation activity carried out. Since 2002. 2002. And so His Excellency also gave me a matching order. Was it that students were not graduated? Students were, yeah, yeah, they graduated students, but of course, because of the leadership, wrong leadership. That's what I'm trying to say. When you have wrong leadership, then it can lead to a lot of issues. The school established in 2002, so that which means that for 16 years, no convocation. And so the, His Excellency said, no, this cannot be. Mm. And you know, in a tertiary institution, for you to give out degree certificates, so you must, uh, there must be a convocation. convocation. And where the governor is actually the moderator. So we had the first convocation in 2018. In 2019, we also had the second convocation. Mm. I want to say that, that is just, the, the other aspect is this, 
in terms of, you know, we inherited debt of about salary areas of about 14 more salary areas there in the institution. Okay. 14 more salary areas. I can speak authoritatively now that we have two months left. The governor has settled over 12 months of the salary areas. And so the workers are motivated and so they are productive. And so the other thing that we also need to do is looking at the institution. For institution of that nature to move to be among the global uh, school, competitive school, yes. it therefore means that the academic infrastructure also has to be enhanced. And so we looked at it and said, what do we do? So we looked at the programs. We had to restructure the programs were not accredited. Programs were not accredited. We have over 25 programs in the school. Out of the 25 programs, just 12. 12. And so what we needed to do was that to enhance, to, to carry out accreditation. So a lot of programs were accredited. And some of them, they are, still, uh, they are ongoing. S then the other issue we also looked at, for us to enhance academic infrastructure, we also need to build up the human capacity, training, to train the academic staff, to train the staff so that they can be in line with the global best practices. And so what we did was that to enhance, to organize workshops, to organize seminars, conferences, and let me tell you, it is on record today that a Do State Polytechnic student built the first app that is being used by the school today. They built it. And so we needed to set up some centers of excellence in the school. For example, we have Center for Geospatial Information Science, we have Center for Gender Studies, we have Center for Academic Success and Counseling. That center, for example, was donated to the school by Chief Ine with the support of His Excellency. And so all these activities, then we also now have to look at, look at the students. What do we do to enhance the quality of the student, graduates? Because we need to produce functional quality graduates. And for us to produce functional graduates, job-ready graduates, that was the, ma the mandate given to us by His Excellency. It therefore means that we have to expose them to the industry. So we built, we built what we call industrial academia interface, where the students in the end one, they are exposed to the industry. And so when they graduate, so the industry can easily absorb them because they already know the needs of the industry. And so with that alone, you know, the first year in 2018, 2019, we discovered that our students after graduation, industries were looking for them. And so they were engaged by industries. For example, NBC engaged over 25 students, 25 graduates in my school in engineering. And that is a plus. It has never happened before. Okay. Now, you spoke about uh, the first uh, convocation being held in yeah. 2018. Yeah. And uh, so, with me, between 2002 and 2018, there was no convocation. There was no convocation. So, what now happens to the students that graduated between, let's say, 2006? or 2007 and 2017? Okay. Were they part of those that graduated? Yes, in other words, we had a combined accreditation, uh, convocation ceremony. In other words, from 2004, 2003, where we had the first years, because for ND, ND is just a two-year program. Yes. The year for HND, we have okay. one. So for that, for, uh, from 2003, 2004, so up to 2018, so we had a combined convocation ceremony. Uh, ceremony and His Excellency, the moderator to the institution, was there to administer the oath. And so it was actually. And uh, let me also uh, say this at this point in time. You know, for that period, the students were not issued certificates. And so, so we had to work anywhere. Yeah, yeah, they can work. Yes. Uh, apart from that, not just to work anywhere. Oh, if, they need to, if, they, to show. if they need to upgrade themselves. So institution, for example, would demand for their uh, transcript, would demand for their results, so the students would be, they were stranded. So parents, guardians, the students, they were all happy. And so that is, that is a, a, a very good uh, 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 transformation that uh, was carried out. Then the other issue, the other uh, area I also want to address is, we also look at the institution. You know, for institution to, to actually excel, there are a lot of parameters involved. Uh, I agree that most of the institutions in Africa today, or let me say in Nigeria, 
you discover that in terms of rating, they are not well rated. As a result of the academic activities in the school, as a result of the positional restructuring, do you know Edo State Polytechnic was ranked the fifth best by webometric ranking? Fifth, fifth best polytechnic in Nigeria. And so that a plus to us, and a plus to His Excellency, a plus to Edo State, and a plus indeed to Nigeria. So it was a great idea. And so what we are, so how did we achieve that? What we did was that we looked at our website. Our website is www.edupoli.edu.ng. We look at we look at our website. We looked at the ICT uh, support initiative. So we had to restructure them. And what we, what we did was that we established a center for uh, innovation and ICT. And that center was given a mandate to actually train and retrain the staff, the academic staff and the non teaching staff, and indeed the students, so that they can develop. So we don't have people from coming from outside to help us, no. We also, and in order to also uh, sell, we also, we also engage the activities of foreign scholars. Because we know we live in a global competitive world. Yes. So what we needed to do was that we invited, we, we engaged the service of scholars from Switzerland, uh, Dr. Ama Madasu from Switzerland. We engaged uh, Dr. Agui from Germany, uh, we, uh, Dr. Oko, Professor Oko from South Africa, and so many. Uh, Professor Alex Ibinewoka from uh, California. So these are visiting scholars to the Polytechnic. And so what they do, they, uh, once or twice in a year, they come and spend three weeks with the students and with the faculty. And with that, they can train them and they impart knowledge. So there's cross-fertilization. There's exchange of information okay. and there's exchange of ideas. And so we now have a protecting that is producing job-ready graduates. Now, this is, your, this is your academic drive. Has it been able to boost industry academia relationship? Yes, of course. You, you, you know, like, just like what I said, because we, 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 we needed to, to achieve that to, because you agree with me that one of the problems uh, that is actually causing uh, uh, the, the increase in, unemplo uh, in uh, unemployment situation today in Nigeria is because we have, we have a system that graduates, when, when they leave the university, uh, they, they can't fit into the industry because there's a disconnect. And that is, that is because the programs are not adjusted. The programs are not in line with what the industries are doing. And so what might happen is they gather when they leave, they need to be retrained and retrained again. So we looked at it. So we looked at our programs, and so we need to we restructure our programs to meet the industry needs. And so today, uh, by also inviting members of the industry, uh, captains of industry, and even uh, a seasoned academia to deliver lecture. So that, uh, with that, they, we, we were able to build the academia to, to, to reduce that gap between the academia and the industry interface. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, we're chatting with uh, Professor Abiodun Falodun, Director of Edo State Polytechnic, Usain. When we come back, we are going to be talking about how government and TED Fund have supported the infrastructural and academic development of the Polytechnic. Stay with us. Esilsa Igaro. I am a pupil of Adil Suwa Primary School in Benin City. Anytime I am going to school, I am full of excitement. I am excited because of the beauty of my school. Our classrooms are well furnished and of course our teachers teach us very well. Our teachers with new techniques and electronic devices have made learning very easy and fast. I cannot wait to be in school again tomorrow. Listen to this. On the 5th of October 2019, thousands of teachers gathered at the Eagle Square Abuja to honor Governor Godwin Obaseki as their best performing governor. 
This is because Governor Obaseki's far-reaching redemptive measures have created the bright environment with the introduction of Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation, Edo Best Program. Under the Edo Best Program, 11,300 teachers have been trained in ICT. 11,300 tabs have been distributed, 891 schools have been covered, 269,000 pupils are benefiting from Edo Best. Liberia, Rwanda, Sierra Leone have visited to adopt the model, while states in Nigeria including Lagos have also visited and are said to adopt the model. Pupils learn three times more of what they used to learn. Edo teachers are the third group of workers in the world to work with Facebook workspace. 1,200,000 instructional materials have been distributed and there is community ownership of schools. Governor Obaseki is changing the people's socioeconomic business with robust basic education in Edo State. <laughs> All right, you're welcome back. Professor Falodu, could you just tell us briefly about the Department of Mass Communication? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, mass Communication is one of the programs uh, established uh, by the management of the institution just uh, in 2019. Yes. Uh, the department is uh, uh, is uh, a flagship program. Uh, first, to establish that department, uh, we looked at uh, so many uh, parameters. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, Polytechnic is uh, actually meant to, the mandate they have is to train uh, medium or middle level manpower. Uh, and so we, look at the, we looked at the industry uh, where you have uh, uh, so for us to actually help the, the state, yes. help Nigeria in producing functional uh, graduates uh, in mass communication. So uh, it, the program was established. And since then, we, the program has uh, been uh, experiencing a lot of uh, uh, positive transformation. Let us talk about the facilities in the, the department. Yeah, the, the, for the depa in the department we yes. have a, a state of the art and conventional equipment. Uh, we have uh, is well equipped, totally equipped. Uh, we have a television studio. Uh, we have radio studio that is not going on. The construction, is the, I mean the construction of the, uh, the physical structure is ongoing. Uh, then we have uh, ICT facilities okay. that will enable the students to excel. In fact, that department is fully ICT driven. Uh, you need to visit uh, the department in Edo State Polytechnic and you'll see that the facility we have, uh, most institutions in Nigeria don't have such facility. Mm. Now, uh, the Edo modular refinery mm. is on the verge of completion. And the operators say that they are liaising with universities and polytechnics mm. in Edo State mm. to build local capacity to operate in the oil and gas sector. Mm. Now, what is your impression of this project? And is your school looking at taking advantage of this window? Of, of, of course, of course. Uh, just before, I, just similar to uh, the, the, the issue of a geospatial information science center we yes. have, uh, the GI. You remember, you, you also know that uh, His Excellency, the Governor, has done uh, very well in the area of uh, uh, land mapping, uh, uh, in the area of uh, issuing of a certificate uh, of occupancy. Okay. And so when we looked at that uh, agency, yeah. uh, EDOGs, uh, so what we did, we, so in our school, we established the Center for Geospatial Information Science. That is because we want to support the state government okay. to produce the manpower that is needed. Okay. Uh -huh. So that at any point in time, where, when the issue of technicalities, uh, the potential will be ready to provide the support. And so in the, in the, in the Center for GIS, we have state-of-the-art facilities, we have drones, we have a lot of facilities there. 
And so we also have a collaboration with uh, uh, NIMET and indeed the federal government and other uh, agencies. So for the Edo uh, modular refinery, at the Department of Petroleum uh, Engineering in my school, uh, is already working out uh, modalities for collaboration uh, with the uh, state government in that aspect. Because uh, even if you have expatriate that will be working there, but one yeah. day the expatriate definitely will leave. And so it's also good, so we have to set up a structure uh, in place so that we can always have a replacement and we have our students that will go in there and be trained. And again, we also do, uh, the collaboration will also enable our students to go there for their uh, uh, IT training, uh, industrial training attachment. With that, that will help to uh, uh, also support the students in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of sound uh, academic uh, uh, learning. So, but looking at the, 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 the program, Edo Modular, one is going to create a lot of jobs. That is number one. A lot of jobs for the Edo indigenous is going to create a lot of jobs. And secondly, it will help to boost the industrialization concept of His Excellency. Oh, yes, the state will be highly industrialized. And that is what we actually need. Because government alone cannot solve the problem, cannot solve the, yes. So we need such uh, wonderful ideas. And so what we're also going to do with the Edo Modular Refinery, my school, Edo State Polytechnic, because we have that Department of Petroleum uh, Engineering. So what we're going to set up a structure that will, that will also provide a kind of advisory role to them. because. You see, for example, we know the structure of the state. We know in terms of the chemical composition. We know, we know it very well. And so if there are certain uh, ideas that need to be pushed out to them, the school will also provide such information. And so when, we, when you have such collaboration between the industry and the academia, you discover that the students will benefit. Then our faculty, that means the lecturers, will also visit they do more left right. Also, to, to acquire more knowledge, practical knowledge, practical exposition. In so doing, uh, the, 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 the state will be producing functional and quality graduates. Thank you very much. Thank now, you. how has the state government and TED Fund supported the infrastructure and academic development of the institution? Uh, first, the state government has uh, done very well in providing uh, uh, infrastructure in the institution. Uh, when you go to the polytechnic, you see uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, structures yeah. uh, that are being executed by the state government. Okay. For example, we have the CBT uh, center uh, fully equipped with uh, ICT facilities, state-of-the-art ICT facilities. It, fully, uh, uh, it was done by the C4 project and by the state government. Uh, then you also have the administrative building. We have a lot of we have lecture theaters. Uh, it's, uh, uh, and all this because of uh, the, the, the His Excellency actually believed that uh, polytechnic education, technical and vocational education is very critical to national development. The, the support of the tech fund is also very massive. Uh, I will tell you that uh, for the past uh, two years, we have uh, had a lot of massive uh, transformation in the geographical landscape of the institution. Uh, for now, we have over, over nine projects completed, and about three, they are ongoing. Yeah. For example, we have workshops on engineering, workshop mechanical, electrical, civil, uh, petroleum, uh, they are ongoing. Then we, we, we also have a, a, a state-of-the-art um, ultra-modern library. Then we now also have twin lecture theaters, and all these projects are ongoing. Uh, so the uh, about nine projects have been fully completed, and uh, three of them have been commissioned by the federal government. The school recently engaged some international faculties to drive its internationalization. Yep. Now, I know you have touched a little bit on that, but why was this done, and what has been the result so far? Okay. The, the, the idea of uh, internationalization is to uh, it will enhance uh, cross fertilization of ideas uh, between uh, foreign faculty and our own faculty. Okay. Uh, uh, that, you know, will, uh, uh, will bring uh, 
uh, more innovation uh, and also to bring in more uh, uh, sound ideas that will transform the institution. I tell you this, for example, uh, uh, we have invited, uh, we had a foreign scholar from Switzerland, a software engineer. Uh, he was in the institution uh, for about a month and he had very good interaction with the faculty and the students. Immediately after that training, the students of the Polytechnic were able to develop the app which we presently use to carry out a lot of academic and administrative activities today. So, of course, the impact of foreign scholars in the institution of Tremendous. Then the area of uh, environmental, for example, we have uh, the foreign scholars we have in the institution, we have presently over 11 foreign scholars from outside. And all the scholars, they are carrying out their job effectively pro bono, I can tell you. Because they also believe that uh, to support institutions like Edo State Polytechnic, is supporting humanity in developing humanity and some of them are also scholars uh, for uh, scholars that are from Edo states and so they also believe that for them to also contribute to the advancement of the state they have to also uh, give, uh, something. give something in return and so and, and it's uh, working well for us so in the area for example i was going to we have a uh, dr agui uh, from germany is uh, in the area of urban and regional development. Uh, of course, that is an area that uh, uh, His Excellency is also passionate about. Uh, I know uh, we already have uh, uh, the details. Uh, the state government wants to build, uh, to have a, a kind of a, a regional hub for urban and regional development. You are, recently, we had a, a meeting with uh, a, a very robust uh, meeting with uh, uh, some uh, foreign uh, uh, expatriates and we're able, uh, in the area of urban and regional development and even with the state government. So we carry out some training. And uh, so the faculties from outside have actually contributed uh, greatly in the advancement of the institution. All right. If you want to reach us, you can um, send SMS or WhatsApp message to our phone zero nine zero five one seven zero two five seven one zero nine zero five one seven zero two five seven one and then when we come back we are going to be talking about why the polytechnic was in the news recently. Stay with us. My name is Nosayaba Wellington, a teacher at Government Science and Technical College, Benin City. Since I have been in this school, I have never witnessed such massive government intervention. In fact, there is no word to describe this extraordinary infrastructural development that is ongoing in this institution. This of a conducive atmosphere for teaching and learning and as a teacher I have no choice than to put in my best to reciprocate government huge investment now this kind of school nine them they see for Budo Ibo this now another Obaseki wonder I beg make we clap for governor governor Obaseki Bo now the concerned citizens of Edo State now I sponsor this message We may just be able to take one or two calls, so you can call us on 0905-170-2571. Prof has uh, graciously agreed to talk to one or two people, but just in case you cannot reach him on the phone, you can send the SMS to 0905-170-2571, or you send the whatsapp message now um, prof it was in the news recently that the edo polytechnic 
secured an international grant for research on STEM from the Canadian government. How were you able to pull this off? And what are the prospects for attracting more international grants for research? Thank you for that question. Uh, yes, Edo State Polytechnic won a, a Canadian grant uh, recently. Uh, first, to secure that grant, first, when I was uh, appointed by His Excellency in 2018, the first workshop uh, I organized was grantmanship workshop. Grantmanship. I had a grantmanship clinic. Call it a grantmanship clinic. What, what it, it means is that uh, uh, you train the people on how to write and develop winning proposals, uh, both from within and outside the country. Okay. And so I had resource person from uh, from Nigeria and also from outside the country. That was the first workshop I was appointed in April. Uh, that workshop was organized in May. Okay. Uh, because uh, I'm from the university. Uh, I, I strongly believe that for institution to excel, uh, faculty members should be uh, aggressively, aggressively involved in writing proposals to attract grants to institution. But unfortunately, what, happen, what, is, uh, what, hap what is happening in Nigerian institution today uh, in terms of uh, grantmanship skills is lacking uh, because uh, uh, people are not taught. And, uh, and apart from that, uh, people are not interested. There are a lot of funds that are available, uh, both uh, from uh, uh, multilateral funding agency, bilateral funding agencies, and these funds are available. So, but you need to develop winning proposals because it's highly competitive. And so when you develop proposal and it's approved, then you'll be given the fund to execute the, pro the proposal or the project and proposal. So when I got to the school, I observed that uh, it was, uh, I needed to organize the program so that the staff, the academic staff there would be well positioned okay. to attract grants to the institution. And so, by the grace of God, uh, not just this uh, Canadian grant, we also won the Ted Fund grant, highly competitive. Oh, yeah? Co uh, national co uh, concept, yes, highly competitive research fund. We, we submitted concept notes. Two of our concept notes were positive. And so, for the Canadian STEM grant research, what actually happened is that uh, we saw a call for proposal. And so, I also established, I told you earlier on that I established the Center for Gender Studies. That, program, that Canadian grant is actually meant to address uh, the issue of gender violence. And so uh, I put up a team, and that team uh, was able to submit a proposal. And uh, just a few months ago, uh, it, the announcement was made that uh, Adobe dope state polytechnic, indeed, the first polytechnic in Nigeria, that has attracted such a grant to an institution. So you can see the transformation uh, of the polytechnic just because the leadership of the institution is drawing strength from His Excellency, the governor of Edo State. Because mm -hmm. I also believe in him, uh, because uh, when you are with His Excellency just for five minutes yeah. in, the area, in the area, for example, of grantmanship, yes. you will be taught, he will you know, it will actually impact on you positively because he, be, he also believes in attracting grants. And so, we are going to be flying. We have written a series of proposals to different funding agencies, especially international funding agencies, because uh, international funding agencies have a lot of funds, especially for the developing countries. Uh -huh. So these funds we are going to attract to build infrastructure in the polytechnic. And so my school, Edo Poly, is well positioned in attracting more grants to the institution. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what is the status of um, the academic research and uh, what is it that you are doing to promote more applied, uh, more applied research as well as industry input in your programs? Yeah, th thank you. Well, to, to what we have been doing, uh, we actually first we, 
we, we, we put in place a series of uh, workshops, capacity building. First, the mind that is going to carry out uh, research must be well positioned because there are, there are guidelines for executing excellent research. And so, we organize a series of workshops to train this ac academic staff in particular so that they can actually map a strategy to, to carry out executive research. Mm. One of such uh, programs we actually organize that uh, we brought people from the industry, we brought people from the academia. And so we had to look at the problems, the challenges. So how do we solve the problems? How do we contribute to our society? And so lecturers, faculty were exposed to these issues. For example, I can tell you, we, we look at, uh, we have vast area of land. You know, uh, initially they were covered with a lot of uh, grasses or weeds. So the idea is, how do you develop, for example, a machine, a robot, that will go out to the feed and clear the grasses and go back when the feed is okay, but come immediately, and uh, we take over the feed when you know that the grasses have taken over the feed too. And therefore, we looked at it, what do we do? So in the area of artificial intelligence and robotics, so uh, yes, so I have to put up a team from engineering, ICT, so we establish the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. Right now, the, the faculty and students they are working on it. How do you develop a robot? Because that one will save a lot of save us a lot of money for cleaning grasses, diesel, the, even the manpower involved. So the, the uh, this idea, uh, well, I'm just giving it out. It's not supposed to because uh, we have uh, intellectual property that is still uh, so. So, but I will just stop at that stage. But yeah. you see, the other area is for you to execute good research. You also have to know the ethics, and so. Ethics of the ethics of research, so we, we have to invite also because you have to train and retrain, very fundamental, which is lacking in most of our institutions today. People are not trained, and so we in ethics. How do you, how do you carry out fine research? How do you carry out research that will impact positively on the community? So we looked at it and said, okay, in our environment, for example, one of the major problems that we have is power power. And so a research group was formed and that research group, the mandate is to develop alternative sources to power. And so right now in the guest hostel, uh, in the main hostel, they have been able to ins uh, install solar power developed by the staff of the institution. So that is applied research. We have to develop something that will solve, yeah, if you go there now, yeah, develop by them. We so have they have power now in the hostel? We have power in the hostel, 247. So if not because of the, the guest hostel. In the guest hostel and the main hostel. If not because of the COVID, we would have wanted to, to extend it to other areas. The admin block and the lecture theaters. If you do that, and by the time we are through with that, you just discover that even the students, they will not be more interested in working with the faculty. Because you see, we have a lot of challenges in Nigeria where we can have breakthrough by faculties. But what happened? That people are blindfolded. Uh, I'm sorry to say this because a lot of us don't, uh, that are not involved in training and retraining. And so the, mind, the, 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 the mindset is being narrowed. And so what happened is that they go in there, it's just to copy and paste. But when we are able to carry out research that will affects the environment where we live, then of course, there will be a transformation of the environment. What we're also looking at is the, the roads, internal roads in the campus, they are not tied. So, but we are looking at a situation whereby the Department of Mineral Resources Engineering, we're already working at a modality. As a matter of fact, we have laid all the caps, the students and the faculty, as part of their research, laid all the caps. So we are, we are trying to see what we'll do now to produce our own asphalt. And because of the sound solid structure there in the, in the environment that we say we can have 
it, uh, a, a road that is completely asphalted. So that is what we are looking at. So we have to solve. Our, so the other area we are also looking at is providing water to the community, because to sink a borehole in Nusen will cost you up to about three million naira. Because you need to because of the dead, the dead profile and the nature of the of the environment, and so we have a, a we have a river that is not too far from the polytechnic. So we are trying to see the Department of Engineering, Mechanical and Electrical Engineering. is a teamwork. They are coming up how to construct, how to build a, a dam. As a matter of fact, we have submitted this proposal to Tetron for funding. Because you see in the Polytechnic, Polytechnic structure is actually to develop Nigeria. Because in the Polytechnic, we have 70% practical and 30% theory. But over the years, this fundamental truth was abandoned. And so you now have institutions that are running theory of practicals. Okay. And so because of that, faculty cannot bring out the best in them. We have a call coming in. Yes, thank you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Morning, how are you? Very fine, thank you. Thanks for calling on the program. Thank you. I was Yes, your name, please. And where are you calling from, sir? You're calling from Zamfara State. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm a DDP member. Okay. The reason why the DDP is going to be the we people, we have DDP for them. Same for. I just want to call you for the program because I know I know DDP. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. What, any, any he question? says he's just welcoming you to the okay, program. Okay. He doesn't speak too much English. He's calling from Zamfara <laughs> State. He's okay, watching it. Okay. And uh, he's just trying to say hello to you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Our caller from Zamfara. Yeah. All right. Now, um, um, you, you were a former deputy vice chancellor at the University of Benin. Yes. Now, you agree that there has always been this disparity between the polytechnic and the university degree. Now, how did you feel leaving the university environment and then moving to the polytechnic environment? Yeah, th thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, I'm still in the university. I'm on leave of absence. Okay. And leave of absence to the state polytechnic. Which means that when I leave, I'll go back to the university. The university. Yes. Uh, uh, first, I want to say that. Uh, no, I actually want you to address the, the dichotomy. The, yes. Yes, the, the dichotomy or the disparity mm -hmm. between the polytechnic education um, and uh, the university education. Yes. Uh, well, from the university uh, point of view, as a, uh, as a staff of the university, I will say that. The Polytechnic has a law in terms of providing practicals, mm. expository practical utilization. What I mean is this. You want to pause a little. Let's take this call from okay. outside the country. Yeah. Hello? Good morning, sir. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Germany. Good morning, sir. Your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Fred. Okay. Yeah, uh, I just dropped a message for you now. Please, can you read the message and then you get back to me? Because you see, it's not public talk. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, just read the message. You get back to me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Okay. I will uh, go back to it. his message. Uh, read it. Uh, read it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. He says, it's, well, according to him, it's not public talk. That is what he says. I don't know. I can't really see the message. I think it's a voice note he dropped. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about this disparity. Okay. This disparity that, dispar that, that you're talking this, about. This, yeah. this disparity. Uh, uh, is has been there for uh, for many years now, yeah. and uh, but uh, I know it's because of uh, the administrative structure. Okay. Uh, 
laid down by the government, yeah. both at the state and the federal okay. level. Uh, because uh, if you look at it, when uh, an HND order is entering the civil service, uh, you have the university graduate enter the civil service, they will enter a different structure, uh, which actually created that disparity. Yeah. But you know that in the polytechnic, we have sound graduates. I remember many years ago, uh, our chief polytechnic graduates in accounting, graduates, accounting graduates from our polytechnic, very sound. Industries, we're looking for them. Are you getting it? So, yes. And if you also look at, so the disparity that is coming up is, uh, at, although recently the federal government has been able to remove it and say, yeah, by, by certain secular or whatever, yeah. But I think that for us to... But you and I know that, yes, yes the federal government removing it yeah. is one thing. But trying to convince the employer is another thing. Yes. yes. But you see, for us to develop as a nation technologically, yes. we need the polytechnic. Okay. Because if you get to the polytechnic, you see a lot of facilities used for practical, to train the children, to train the students. But in the university, in the university, I'm sorry to say, yes. most of the practicals they are now conducted via what we call alternative to practical. And so what happens is that you have graduates coming out from that end. When they get to the industry, they cannot fit in. I can tell you, for example, in my school, Edo State Polytechnic, yes. we have about eight atomic uh, AAS, atomic absorption spectral photometer. We have a functional gas liquid chromatography. We have over 12 flame photometers. All these equipment I've just mentioned, I've just mentioned now. Yes. There are federal universities that you cannot see one. Okay. Just one functional flame photometer or even AAS. So when you get to the polytechnic, to the, get to the polytechnic you see facilities that can be used to train. Students. So but what I'm trying to do is like I'm bridging the gap now. I'm from the university, I'm in the polytechnic. If I had discussed this with the stakeholders at the federal level. Okay, we have a call from the United Kingdom. Okay. You want to take it? Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. Yes, may we meet you, please? Your name? Uh, my name is Dr. Okoji. Dr. Okoji. Yes. Okay. Yes, talk to us. The prof is listening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to comment the work of the prof. His Excellency, because I never knew there was a functional polytechnic. He says he never knew that there was a functional polytechnic, okay, so he's yes. commending the governor. Yes. You can hear him. So I've uh, followed the programs from the beginning. From what I've heard, I think the SNRC and the prof, they, they've done a, a nice work. Okay. So my, uh, my question is this. What are they doing? What are they doing to bring more, to attract more foreign uh, to, to come a partner? Thank you. So it says, what are you doing to bring in more people to come and partner with your institution? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. He I said that after commending the, yes, uh, the work yes. that uh, thank, uh, thank, the governor yes. is doing in Edo State. Yes, thank, yes. You, thank you for the commendation. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, before I was appointed, the polytechnic was not known. Mm. Uh, and that was what actually informed His Excellency to uh, change the name uh, uh, to Edo State Polytechnic. Okay. It used to be Edo State Institute of Technology and Management. Okay. Uh, in the area of bringing in more development, uh, what we are doing is that by engaging qualified foreign faculty, that is one, yes, one aspect where if we, observe, if we are able to get foreign faculties uh, in some areas that we think we are deficient in, yeah. so we engage the foreign faculty. Then secondly, we are also looking at industries 
industries, both abroad and in Nigeria, to partner with, so that we can bridge that gap between the academia and the industry. Then the other area in terms of funding, funding is at three different levels, both the state, the national, and the, the, the foreign uh, funding from uh, different funding agencies. As I've said before, we are developed, we are writing more winning proposals uh, so that we can attract more grants. We are also reaching out to government at the federal and at the state level to, uh, to, to support us in terms of funding. For example, I just, uh, in terms of uh, at the federal level, just recently, with the support of His Excellency, we were able to attract a weather station equipment to the school. A weather station equipment, so which is being used by uh, weather station, uh, by the airport, by farmers to plan, so that they can, they can actually know the exact, they have a kind of accurate and precise uh, uh, weather information for their planting. And so, and that is one of the ways we are we're actually reaching out to corporate uh, uh, organizations. And you say so, that without equipment, they can forecast the weather? Oh, absolutely. Accurately? Absolutely. And that, it has been installed in the Edo State Polytechnic. And so we, we, we're also taking up from there. We are starting a program, a diploma program in the meteorology and climate change. Okay. It will be the first polytechnic in Nigeria to, st to have that program. The program is already on, registration is already on in collaboration with NIMET, so that we will also be producing graduates for NIMET. And so we are on with that. So, and His Excellency is giving us uh, wonderful support in that aspect. Okay. Yeah. Now, what would you have to say to parents who are undecisive about sending their children to the Edo State Polytechnic? In fact, uh, Edo State Polytechnic is one of the best in Nigeria, the fifth best in Nigeria. So uh, my advice is that they should send their children, their awards to the Polytechnic. The Polytechnic has the facility to train the children. And apart from that, we have, a, we have zero tolerance for courtesy, other social vices. The environment is conducive for learning. We have conducive hostels. We have state-of-the-art facilities. And so, the, the, and the, what have, the has also done is that the tuition fee that I must tell you one of the changes that His Excellency introduced. The tuition field of that institution used to be 125,000 Naira, but now it has been brought to 55,000 Naira because the governor wants a lot of people to have access to quality and functional education. That 55,000 Naira, is it for a session or is it for a term? That is for a section. For one year? For one year. Okay. For one year. Okay. Because the institution is not added to make profit, but it will train. Yes, the mandate is to train quality and functional manpower. Okay. And so that's why you can see the, the children of the, the poor, they can have access to the institution today. So briefly, Prof, what yes. three key projects would you say are sufficient enough to secure the governor the second term in office? Just the, briefly, three. Yeah, uh, well, uh, is a is a is a done deal. The governor coming back is uh, it has already been approved uh, by the people because the government of His Excellency is about the people. And when you go when you go to the streets, people will tell you they want the governor back again. And that is because it's touching lives. It's touching. It's affecting the people positively. And so for His Excellency, which you also agree, the Obaseki is a movement now. It's an institution. And so a lot of persons, the Nigerians, Edolites, they are anxiously waiting for September 90 to vote him back again to be governor of Edo State. And so in the area of building more infrastructure, more infrastructure, more roads, more uh, uh, funding for the schools, tertiary institutions, and building excellent, excellent infrastructure at the secondary school level, because he has started it with the primary, and so the secondary, then the tertiary. Okay. And with the peace that we enjoy in those states, 
his second coming by the grace of God is guaranteed. Thank you very much, Professor. All right, we'll take our last break now. We'll come back. We'll go to our page to take just one or two comments. Stay with Thank us. You. My name is Okira Mokwede. This is my Dubai story. Prior to 2018, I was a classroom teacher in Obo Oduma Primary School in the Yewe, Onwa East Local Government area in Edo State. In 2018, I went to attend the pilot phase training of the Edo Best Digital Teachers Training in Benin. And I want to use my t-shirt to tell my story. This was a t-shirt I was given when I was trained to become a digital teacher in 2018. You can see it's written, I'm a digital teacher, not an analog teacher. Shortly after, I attended the training to become a learning and development officer. And this is the t-shirt I was given, where I was supporting teachers in school. This is the t-shirt. Few months after, I was promoted to Subeb to become an instructional oversight officer in quality assurance department, like providing critical data for decision making, where I use, uh, I do data analysis using Excel, Google Sheets. I have gone for different trainings, uh, and it's been a very interesting journey so far. From a classroom teacher in 2018, prior 2018, that had no experience in when it comes to using of the computer, using how to provide, how to do data analysis in a space of two years. Uh, the governor Obaseki led administration and uh, the suburb led by Dr. John Osavalwe have given me the opportunity, they've trained me, equipped me and uh, given me the opportunity to continue to support our teachers in schools, ensuring that uh, effective teaching and learning is taking place in all primary schools in Edo State, ensuring that every Edo child is learning in Edo State. And this is my Edo best story. You are welcome back Thank to you. our page segment. Now let's go to our page to see what has been happening. Yeah. Prof, you know, it's your first time on the program, but I wouldn't know if you have been watching. Usually we go to the page to take uh, mainly the negative comments yes. and questions, but where there is none, we just uh, read out uh, the positive uh, comments. Okay. So let's see. This is coming from Gregory Thomas. Uh, well, it's a positive comment because I've not seen any question or a negative one. He says, um, Edo Polytechnic Usain is ranked among the fifth yes. in the Federation. Okay. And this one is coming from Matthew Amadasu. No, not Matthew Amadasu now. No, there's another one. Okay. Uh, Gregory, okay, the same Gregory Thomas, okay, it says um, this man is grounded in institutional workings and that is for you. Okay. And uh, Bobby or Bayouana says this man is very sound and a blessing to Edo State. Congratulations Thank to you. you. So most of Thank the comments are for you and of course the way you deliver them, your answers to the interview. So we'd like to say a big thank you to Professor Abiodun Falodun, Director of Edo State Polytechnic, Usain, for thank coming you. on the program. Thank you. Thank you My so pleasure. very much. Thank you. All right. And we also like to thank most of uh, the callers, those that sent in their comments, and most importantly, the viewers. You are the reasons that we are here, you know. So we thank you so very much thank for you. watching. And, of course, our discussion today has been pure academic. And we're talking about repositioning education by starting from the very basics. On behalf of everybody that has contributed to this program from the background, my name is Habiba Oyege Oyarekwa. Good afternoon. No man is God. Forward ever, but never
let's go for that together. Hey. Godwin To continue to oh, yes. go back, go back. Oh, back. Oh, back. continue your work. Yo. You do open stadium renovation, even with the dough best. Plenty achievement for your time. Oh. Our life would done better. Yeah. Oh, back. 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 O